this woman okay it's this is such a train wreck for so many reasons this this clip is just unbelievable i've got to let's just watch it uh i just did another video i'm covering because i'm so <laughs> gonna get reported <laughs> how am i single you know what like honestly <laughs> This is like becoming funny actually. I just I don't know. I just don't like anybody. I really don't like I'm f-ing bored And the only person I would have not like made my boyfriend but possibly dated like just to see if I like them like that it Has no interest in me. So I'm just like whatever. So basically I'm just in my <laughs> In my shower taking videos for you guys That's life, right? We lived life <laughs> Oh yeah, and I'm totally having an FU TikTok like kind of day. So now I'm just gonna make a whole series of me in the bathtub. <laughs> you know, I, I actually I laughed so much the first couple of times I watched that. Actually, the more I watch it, the more I'd get really depressed. Like, it's so sad to see a woman getting older. She's obviously got massive issues. She just gets bored in relationships, so she can't hold on to a man. And then she's been reduced to getting her sense of self-worth from social media, doing wet t-shirts in the bathroom. And she's like giggling and happy. And isn't this just quirky and fun when it's so obvious your life is a total train wreck. The part of the video that I really want to discuss is when she says that I don't like anybody. You know, that's why I'm single. You know, I get bored with people. I get bored inside relationships because this is a phenomenon that is certainly on the rise. People used to seek out relationships to provide some sense of safety, stability. Certainly that was the prime motivation for women, but it seems as time goes on, women have kind of adjusted their expectations and now they want their relationships to entertain them. They want their boyfriends to be wild and interesting and to create a life that's fun and dynamic and interesting and there's a fear amongst a lot of men that they're going to end up being boring to women because the women have become such like adrenaline junkies or seeking out drama all of the time what is this fear of boredom that women seem to be encountering and how can you as a man either figure out how to avoid women who are prone to boredom or if a woman like your girlfriend does complain of being bored what can you do about it It is a common complaint. The one thing you cannot do to a woman is bore her. Okay, really quickly, if you're one of those people that uses like your favorite football team as your password, or you use like Facebook or Google to auto sign up to websites, you need to pay attention as I tell you about the sponsor of today's video, NordPass. If you've already been thinking about beefing up your internet security, then you're going to love this because NordPass is giving my audience an awesome discount on their premium plan. You just got to visit nordpass.com slash grace or use code grace at checkout. Now, speaking for myself, I have a lot of internet security stuff. I'm a bit paranoid, but if you guys remember, my YouTube channel got completely hacked and taken down for like a week earlier this year. So I kind of feel like my paranoia is justified. I was complacent before, believe me, I'm not anymore. And I really hope that you're not. You've got to protect your data. You've got to protect your money. So let me tell you about how NordPass works. It's a password manager, okay? So it's all encrypted. Nobody can see it, not even NordPass. You're the only person who can access it. And it stores all of your passwords for you. It even generates passwords. I've signed up for so many things. There's no way I could possibly remember absolutely everything. I've got to have them stored somewhere. And NordPass is the safe way to do that. And these guys have made careful effort to make sure that it's really user-friendly, very simple, easy to use. It's got an autofill function. You can sync it between six devices simultaneously. It even stores your credit card information to make online shopping easier. This product is very popular. It's very highly rated and it's easy to see why. If you want to take your internet security seriously, then you need to be using a password manager like NordPass. It's worth it just for the peace of mind. And if for whatever reason you don't like it, Don't worry, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there really is no risk. There's no reason to not try it. So check out NordPass and remember to access that discount for their premium plan, nordpass.com slash grace or use code grace at checkout. The question becomes, whose fault is it if a woman says that, let's say me, if a woman says I'm boring, am I boring or is she just uncreative and can't see the novelty of the person that I am? You would first need to understand what she means by the term boredom because Good point. so few people use that word correctly, right? That's mm. that's my perspective. It's kind of like the word jealousy. Like jealousy is an umbrella term and within that term, people can be like, I'm scared, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm panicked, like there's all kinds of emotions that we label as jealousy and boredom is the same. I don't think Mm. that 
as children, this generation of women and certainly men were actually sat down properly by our parents and caregivers and said, here's, let me explain the entire range of your emotions. Let's describe them. Let's discuss them. Let's give them accurate labels. And so what so many people call boredom is not actually boredom. So what's a true definition of boredom, right? If you're listening to a lecture for three hours and it's on a subject that you don't care about and you don't understand, that legitimately is boring and you're experiencing boredom. But if you're in a relationship where the person is treating you nicely, you live in a nice neighborhood, you have a nice life, but there's something restless inside you, you're not actually experiencing boredom, but that's what so many women think boredom is. Does that like relate to you? Do you understand what I'm talking about, Matt? Yeah, I mean, that, that makes perfect sense. I guess I'm wondering what is she actually feeling instead? And is it is this kind of like a cover word for hypergamy? You know, like if a woman says uh, this man is boring, does it just mean that he's not going anywhere and I need the kind of man that continuously grows and achieves and pursues? I think that in the best case, mm. <laughs> it's a cover for hypergamy. Often yeah. the, the truth of it is a little bit sadder because hypergamy... In, in truth, is a reasonably clean motivation from women. You know, it's just this evolutionary instinct. You want to be with a high-quality man. There's something kind of noble about that, and it's sort of ingrained in your biology. What so many women are calling boredom is actually their inability to handle their own chaos, and that's certainly mm. compounded when it comes to, you know, the, any personal traumas. But let's just take a regular woman who's had a reasonably good upbringing. She's still got that feminine swirl of emotion and that sort of sense of, what is life? What am I? I'm just flowing this place and I need to find a solid rock of masculinity to actually ground me so that I can fully explore my femininity without feeling like I'm going to get taken away by the current. If she's with a man who isn't satisfying her hypergamy, as you alluded to, who's not providing that rock of stability, then yeah, that chaos is going to be freaking her out. But on top of that, so many people did not receive the love, care, and attention that they needed to as children. They were either directly abused or they were neglected. And so they grew up with all of these frozen emotional needs, you know, trauma, essentially. Now, there's a couple of different ways to engage with trauma. One of them is to be extremely, like, courageous and to tackle it head on, explore your vulnerabilities, seek help, talk to your boyfriend, talk to your therapist. And some women will do that. Not many regrettably few and a woman who does do that it's one of the most important hallmarks of a high quality woman but a low quality woman what she's going to do is that is too frightening i don't want to go there i don't want to look i'm not interested what i'm going to do is engage in distraction and this is an intensely like a uh, destructive coping mechanism for so many women because they experience this internal chaos. They experience this trauma. They're like, oh my God, all this stuff is bubbling up. Emotions I don't understand. Thoughts I can't handle. You know what I need to do? I need to get drunk. I need to try drugs. Mm. I need to cheat on my boyfriend. I need to go from man to man to man. I need to find the craziest, most outrageous kind of man who just has me on this emotional roller coaster. Because that way I'm not going to get bored. Because when I'm bored, when nothing's happening, that's when that internal chaos and all of that trauma just starts bubbling up. But if I'm able to latch myself to this crazy, intense, <laughs> like filled with drama, treats me badly kind of man, then I can focus externally on him. That's where all the chaos and the unpleasant emotions is coming from. And in a sense, it actually feels easier to deal with for a lot of women because at least it's outside of herself and she can trick herself into believing that all the craziness in her life is just coming from him. It's not coming from inside herself, which is a mm. much more frightening prospect. <clears throat> So your your belief here, and I think I agree, assuming that I'm going to summarize this correctly, is that a woman's aversion to boredom is a, a very uh, interesting and kind of clever aversion to confronting the chaos in her own mind. And the only way to outcompete that chaos, likely driven from her past, is to create a distracting chaos in the present and future so that she's always looking at that instead of looking inside. It's so much easier to go for distraction than it is to actually deal with this stuff. And I think that this is one of the reasons why couples are staying together for shorter periods of time, why women are, you know, getting dissatisfied out of this sort of sense of boredom is because when you've got like a Tinder app or you've got, you're getting hit on like, and you've got so much validation coming from your social media, it just seems you've got so many options. The men that you're dating just seem so replaceable in a way that they never have before in human history. And so when it's like, hey, 
we're in a tough time right now. We're not seeing eye to eye. We have different values. We're miscommunicating. We're going to need to really dig deep. Me personally, you personally, and us as a couple, we need to get into the weeds and actually find out what is broken here. And can we fix it? That's going to be hard work, really hard work. It's going to be painful. The reward is unbelievable. If you can actually create that healthy relationship, you'll, you won't regret it. But for so many people, when the temptation of just bowing out on that relationship is right there to actually try and convince them, hey, instead of just, you know, taking the easy way, do you want to do something really hard, really painful that's going to explore the deepest crevices of your vulnerability? That's a hard sell for a lot of people. But unfortunately, it is 100% necessary. There is not a functional relationship on this planet that hasn't been through periods like that. It is impossible. True core happiness has to be based on something that is very, very deep inside each person. They've explored that depth, they've showed it to the other person and they've connected to that level. That's where the truly healthy relationships come from. A lot of men are sort of struggling, I think, to actually <coughs> understand what is required of them, right? Like, am I meant to be making her content with you know, the spaciousness of life, you know, a bit of emptiness, like, hey, let's just appreciate the little things. Or is my job like, I'm going to make a bunch of money so I can buy her the things that she wants. I'm going to take her to meet interesting people. You know, I got to plan trips and adventures like all the time. And a lot of guys, I think one of the quickest paths to like misogyny, like just be like, women are just terrible or whatever, is when they do what they think is right. Like, ah, I'm going to make her feel safe. I'm going to make her feel secure. I'm going to play that role. But they picked a party girl. They picked a drama girl, someone who needs excitement and boredom. And then they end up getting cheated on, which is why I'm going to play this clip now. So you're telling me after all the texts, all the snaps, all the FaceTime calls, all the dates, all the times that I would come over there at night, just to make sure you were all right. None of that meant anything to you. I don't understand how the f you could just play me like that. Like I literally didn't do anything to you. I fucking did everything for you. But you think it's okay just to fucking cheat on me? Like I ain't fucking shit to you. Like what the fuck? Like are you fucking kidding me? I don't. I can understand, like, ah! This is agonizing and relatable for a lot of us, myself included. It nails this existential, like, what the fuck feeling about how life, no matter how hard we try, just seems to not care about our efforts. It seems like we try our best to play by the rules and just get knocked over anyway. Typically in situations like this, one of two things has gone on is one, he picked the wrong girl. You know what I mean? Like he looks young to me. He looks maybe like, like very early twenties and things like that. And you gotta understand girls in that stage of life are not necessarily looking for stability. They've never been hotter. They've got the freedom. They're out of high school. They're experimenting. They're looking for wild adventures. They want the, the top quality man and so you know if you're trying to date a party girl and then turn her into like your stay-at-home girlfriend you have to expect something like this to occur so you've chosen the wrong girl if you want someone who's going to appreciate the stability that you're offering then you need to seek out somebody with that particular personality type and maybe there's something in you that's perhaps like well, why are you attracted to that you know was there some kind of goal of like i can be the one to tame a girl like this a lot of guys get caught on an ego trip in that instance but the second thing is that he's made the cardinal mistake that so many nice guys make which is thinking that doing things for a woman is going to engender gratitude. And sometimes it can. If it's a specific type of woman and it's long into the relationship, it can. But often not, especially if you're just dating and you're early and young. Actually, you need to kind of flip the script. If you want her to be loyal to you, it's not a case of making her feel indebted. Like, I'm just going to be so generous. I'm going to do so much for you that you're just going to be so overwhelmed with gratitude that you're going to stay with me forever. Actually, it's about setting yourself up as the prize, which is going to appeal to her hypergamy. Like, look, I'm a high quality guy. Like, I'm not going to be chasing you up all the time with texts and Snapchats and doing you favors, driving you places. Actually, I'm a busy guy. Can you do some of that stuff for me? Can you check in on me? Like, have her chase you. And if you're talking about trying to prevent women from feeling bored, nothing's going to make a woman bored more quickly than you doing everything for her. You know, you going out of your way, sacrificing your own stability and and happiness and time and things like that in order to make her life easy. It's like, no, there's removing any sense of challenge. Who wants to play like a computer game set on easiest mode all the time? But that's essentially what you've done for her. Ideally, what you've got to do is sort of have her 
see you as this very worthy prize so that she keeps chasing you, chasing you, chasing you, and she's doing things for you until that point that it's been locked in and there's loyalty. Uh, a woman falls in love with you when she's serving you, not when you are serving her. And it's it's a it's an investment and a buy-in kind of psychology that applies to everybody, of course. That's you love someone more the more you serve them. It seems counterintuitive, but it actually is quite obvious. There's a certain amount of truth to the statement that women would rather feel negative emotion than feel no emotion, right? Like the kind of the worst thing that you can do in terms of attracting women is be invisible to her, like gray, like no, like you've got to actually sort of stand out, which is why the old school pickup artists would recommend doing things like negging a woman, you know, like making her feel slightly insecure because at least then you're sort of registering on her emotional radar. Now, in truth, while that's going to work to a certain degree on every kind of woman at the start, like in the initial sort of flirting phase, it's a really big red flag if continuing on to into the relationship, you need to continue to provoke insecurities in her in order for her to feel um, like, like she's going to continue to be attracted to you, right? Like if you're finding like you need to provide drama, in your relationship in order for her to actually just not get bored with you and leave, then you're dating the wrong woman, okay? She doesn't have the requisite level of emotional maturity. She hasn't dealt with her own chaos. She hasn't dealt with her own trauma to a such degree that she's even really capable of being in a relationship. Now, inside the relationship, I don't think that it's a matter of creating negative excitement in terms of like the emotions are going to keep her going. If she's a high quality woman, she is going to need emotions, but you can rest assured positive emotions will do the do the trick. Okay. So if in your masculinity, in your leadership, if in appealing to her hypergamy, you're consistently able to make her feel good, make her feel loved, make her feel desired, make her feel like she's got you and you're a really good prize. Like she's done well out of her life. That's going to be enough. <laughs>